So we're going to go over the skills that we've covered with Mr. Leonard here. And this first exercise that we go over is called Relax on a Mat. What we're going to do here is grab our mat, come on over, and as you can see, Mr. Leonard loves this exercise, which is great. Um, and even though I'm super excited, this exercise actually has the ability to uh, relax us and calm us down. So what I'm looking for from our little guy here is that he goes into a DOWA and then rests his little chin down. So the reason that I spell things out like this, uh, as opposed to saying the words, because it's a command-free exercise, I'm never going to tell him what to do. I want him to work through this 100% on his own, which is actually what makes it an impactful exercise. It's basically the difference between driving a car yourself or watching someone drive a car. You learn more if you've got to work through it on your own and you don't get any additional coaching. So his body language is going to be sending a signal to his brain that whatever's going on around him is A-OK. -okay. So this is a desensitization and counter conditioning exercise that you can utilize moving forward. So um, a multitude of instances that it's great. Uh, when he gets super excited at 7 in the evening, folks would use it for puppies. Had people use it for uh, plane rides, dog friendly hotels. And uh, initially we started using this for fearful dogs and aggressive dogs and then realized that every dog should just have this tool in their toolbox, toolbox which is basically um, emotional regulation. So can't say enough uh, about this exercise and how important it is. Uh, it will give him the ability to work through um, all his big emotions. And now you've got a, a tool in your toolbox uh, if moving forward. He gets overly excited or anxious. So, I mean, I've used it for um, cars, bicycles, kids, anything that um, gets your pup nervous uh, or overly excited. So, let's go over our uh, main game exercises. Leonard, take a treat, drag it up towards my face as soon as he makes eye contact to give him a click. Then I'm not going to drag a treat. He has to do it on his own accord. Leonard, he's got to make eye contact. Leonard, You'll notice there it took him like, what, three seconds to look up at me. That's fine. I'm only going to say the commands one time and give him an opportunity to think it through. And that will cultivate a stronger learning response from him. So when you're training with him, stick with that. One time, give him a chance to think it through. Uh, just like if you were to ask a kid the same math problem repetitively, it just becomes really difficult to say, what's four plus four, four plus four, four plus four. Like, ah, oh, I'm overloaded. I can't handle this. I can't give you the right answer. Same thing with dogs. Just give him a chance to think it through. So I'm going to take a treat, toss it on the ground for our last exercise. Leonard. And he's got to be able to focus in on me even though he is interested in that treat on the ground. Leonard. Very good. So I'd like to parlay this into some good recall. Leonard, come. So it's coming when called. And you can click when a dog gets all the way up to you. Or Leonard, come. Or as soon as he looks at you. Um, depending on what you're getting. Sometimes dogs won't come all the way up, in which, uh, at which point, and then I'll click when they get all the way up to me, I would say, Leonard, come, wait till he gets all the way up, or if they get distracted and don't hone in on you, um, let's say, if we're just playing with dogs over here, this is too much fun, Leonard, come, then I would uh, get him as soon as he checks in with me. So let's uh, keep on working through. Leonard, sit. Good job, bud. Leonard, down. Leonard, stay. Good job. So with his down, the clickable moment is when his elbows hit the floor. With his stay, um, I'm simply taking a, a couple steps back from him, and then I'm returning to him. And uh, you can get to where you walk back and then call him over when he's done, but for the time being, we want it to be really clear that he doesn't move when we're doing a stay. So I want to say, Leonard, stay. and return to him so that he never moves when, uh, after I tell him to stay. Um, very good, sir. Next, let's go over your leave-it exercise. we got some delicious treats here. I'm just going to put it in front of his face. Leave it. Very good. You notice that real great uh, retraction? He's a little bit under the camera here. Let's get back here. Leave it. So he really pulls back. Uh, makes it very clear that he's 
um, done going after the treats. Next is our space exercise. So I want to stop Mr. Leonard from jumping on me. Leonard, space. Good job. Huh? Leonard. Leonard. Space. So you'll notice what I'm looking for is about a two foot bubble around myself. Leonard, space. I like to use this as a preventative measure and uh, stop him from jumping up on me before he has a chance. I like to try some reps from the front, side, and behind. So let's try one from the side. Leonard, space. And you can also feel free to get him a little wound up, run around a little bit, get excited. Leonard, space. Good boy. <laughs> Very good. Um, so him purely being stationary and um, giving you that two foot bubble is exactly what we're looking for. Um, one thing to take uh, mention of is that um, he likes to use, as, use uh, jumping up as an attention getting mechanism. So anytime that I notice him just kind of hanging out, uh, usually he'll do it more often behind me. Uh, if I see him hanging out down here and he's just chilling, give me a downer sit, I like to love him up and uh, really reinforce that and let him know he's doing the right thing. Uh, because uh, you want to give him attention when he's hanging out doing the right thing because he's going to definitely get your attention when he jumps up on you. Um, so you want to encourage that, that good behavior. Leonard, touch. So this is our targeting exercise. We get Mr. Leonard to um, go wherever we want him to go simply by putting our hand down, touch, and telling him uh, touch. And this is the beginning of agility training. Uh, and it's also a good attention getting exercise when you're outside and he's really preoccupied. You can just tell him touch and get him to focus in. Use it when I'm out uh, walking dogs and super busy. It's just a simple thing to get their attention, get them positioned exactly. Um, where you want them to be. So that is perfect. Um, Mr. Leonard is uh, is really crushing it. And uh, we're just going to tune out here and then get him leashed up and go over his uh, loose leash walking. Good job, sir.